Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing for another Sonar Head video. This is the Assault Small Block Chevy Sonar Head. I'm going to do a little review and I'm going to tell you, I'm actually going to somewhat port these, really lightly port this, but this is probably one of the rare times where I'm going to give away everything that I'm doing and show you kind of how to do it. So if you were to get these heads, you can uh, hopefully duplicate what I'm doing. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible for someone really to copy. Reason for it is this is a Chinese head and I don't often sell Chinese heads. Matter of fact, I'm only using these because they're going on my sister's engine. It's going on her 88 Firebird, it's her first car. And we have a set of Autobrocks that are over here, but they're pretty pitted pretty bad. And by the time it takes me to repair them, it just wouldn't be worth the time. So hence using this. So, but anyway, I'll try to give you as much information in this video just to cover what the head is and so you can see what it's like. And I'll even give flow numbers as well. And then I will do a subsequent video where I'll show you, um, I'll port little ways and I'll flow it so you can see what's going on with it. And you can see what changes really help and whatnot. And I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. And I warn you, I'm not gonna go balls of the wall on this one. I'm just going to do some minor work because it's going on a 355. It's only gonna see uh, maybe 6,000, 6,200 RPM. So not a whole lot of RPM. It will be on the dyno though. So we'll get to see some of the results. So let's get started. First off, this head is sold by KMJ. This is their assault head. And this head, in case you, I'm gonna show you the backside because the exhaust port's kind of the giveaway. This head is the Chinese copy of the Dart Pro One Platinum 200cc head. Matter of fact, if I had another Dart head right here next to it, you'd have a hard time to distinguishing the difference. So they're, they're pretty close to the same. Now I'll warn you, even though this is sold by KMJ, this same head, exact same head, might have a different stamping on the end or some small changes like steam holes or maybe angle plugs. But this head is the same head sold by many manufacturers. For instance, Pro Header, same head. RPC, same head. Um, EQ, back when they used to have the Lunar Head, same head. Um, let me think, there's probably Several more, I'm not even, I can't even mention. Uh, Pro Comp actually has a different head that's totally different from this, but they also sell this head too. So there's a Pro Comp head, then Pro Comp also sells this head. So everybody that sells Chinese heads um, probably has a way to get this head. Um, for the record, they're copied Chinese heads. The one I've seen is the copy of Dart Pro One Platinum 200cc, this head. And there's also a copy of the Brodex Iron Killer 200cc head, and that'd be the Promax stuff, and some of the Flotec. Actually, come to think of it though, Flotec actually has some of the R RHS heads. I just saw one that came in here, 180. It is the exact copy of an RHS 180. So uh, there's, so I guess there's three manufacturers that have been copied. The Dart, this one. Uh, Promax is a copy of the Brodex Iron Killer, and then there's the some of the Flotex are this head, some of the Promax head, and some are the um, oh, RHS head. So they're all over the map. So Flotex, you, you don't know which one you're gonna get. So just give you an idea, at least on the small lock side. So let's get started with the review. These have square exhaust ports, they're pretty nice. The head itself is very nice head, I'm not gonna lie, even though it's Chinese, it's a pretty good head. I have sold some of these and they've been on the dyno and they made like, Ported, they made right around 560, I think, on a 406, so not bad. Um, they look pretty good. Now, this one has the two intake bolt patterns, one for the Vortec, which I don't know why you'd be using that, and then the standard one. This is what the chambers look like, and we're fixing to talk about some of the measurements here, and we'll take a look. Okay, I ordered the straight plug just because... The angle plug is better. I'm not going to lie. The angle plug is better. But I ordered the straight plug because um, the car it's going into, I don't want to mess with different headers. And I know they make headers that fit the straight plug, hence straight plug. Okay, but let's talk about what all those measurements on the head are. Uh, and I will be flowing it. The first thing that's most important when you're looking at heads is actually the valve job. That's this. Now, this one is actually a three angle, which I'm going to do my best to show it. It's actually four. This part right here is one. This one right here is two. That's the seat. And this is the top cut. Hopefully I'm showing it well there. So three angles. Really four with this, but that doesn't really count. Um, so not a whole lot. Exhaust, I can't even see well. It looks like 
one, and then the radius, which is normal for exhaust. And uh, there's probably a small top cut here. So maybe one top cut, seat, radius, which is normal. However, the three angle valve job, and I'll give you flow numbers. This is not gonna flow really good. Like if you were just to change the valve job, you'd probably pick up some flow. If you can get more angles in. All my valve jobs, like when I cut them, there'll be five angles. Now, after I'm done porting, there might only be down to three because I blend them together, which I'll explain when I do a porting video. But anyway, so this one's three from the factory. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, for years is what they use, but five is better. And also, uh, it helps out with flow and different things. Now, there are some advantages. This, there's a lot of aluminum on this side, and usually the aluminum is not so much here because the top cut will extend into it and you'll get it. But with a smaller valve, usually you have more aluminum in this area. What that means is, what I'm trying, reason why I tell you this is because me, I can surface the head, and when you surface the head, you start removing this part, and you try not to hit the seat because it'll leave this metal line where it goes, because the cutter will hit aluminum, hit steel, and it drags across and it'll leave like a mark over here where it drags. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is you can flat mill this probably and get the chambers down even further. These are 64 cc's. So that's something. However, when I cut out to a larger valve, I'm gonna go to a 208, which when I, before I poured it, it's gonna move this out. Now, I'll deal with a lot of myths with this. I can't hardly wait to talk about this, but one of the myths is you cut it out to a larger valve, it's gonna flow less. Why would you do that? Um, I'll show you later, but let's talk about the measurements now. So the first measurement I dealt with is the throat and I measured it and it's 1.82. Now some of you might be like, what's that actually is? So let me show you. These are some calipers, you can get them anywhere. This is gonna be the spot right here is where the throat is, right through there. It's right where the seat ring is. And I got it measuring 1.82, and if I divide that by what the valve size I have, which in the head right now is 202, that gives you a 90% throat, which that's a good, safe one. So the throat's safe. However, um, the next measurement that's important is the bowl. And what that is, you see this guide here? This is the guide. If you measure across this way and this way from the guide using your same calipers, just like that, that will give you your bowl. That's how I measure the bowl. And that comes up with 91.9%. So it's actually pretty small. Now these are only 205 cc runners, so they say. So that part's pretty tiny. Now, the reason why I'm gonna cut out to a larger intake valve is for a couple reasons. One, if I was just to try to put the 202 valve job in, it's gonna be kind of tricky because not all the valve angles are gonna come in just because the throat already is kind of big. I mean, it's not big, but it. I like whenever you cut a valve job, you like them kind of tiny because whenever you put your valve job in, you can get more of the angles in, and then you can hand blend it out and make it what size you want it to be. So that kind of helps. But the biggest thing for this one is, and this is really hard to capture, if you ever have a head, you can see it, but this is the short side, and you see that? That right there is, it's in. So it's like, it digs in, then comes out and around. So if I just did that, you'd still have this weird divot. It should be a smooth transition right into the top. It's not, it goes, digs in and around, digs in right there. So in other words, it goes that way, then out and around. That's not good. So if I just did a valve job, it wouldn't get rid of that. Sure, you could use a grinder and kind of smooth and blend that in, but then you still have a dip there before it comes around. So in other words, it's going in and around. So it's not how air would like to travel. So that's not ideal. Putting a bigger valve job in, that will move it out and we'll get out to the aluminum like it should be. And I can make the transition like it should be. So there's part of it. So there's that. Just to also give you an idea, if we look at some of these measurements here, if I put a 208 valve in, that same throat, that's what this is, 1.82, that would give me 87.5%. So you see, I've got some rooms because at 90%, it'd be 1.872. So I've got about 50 thousandths of grinding I could do to get that out, which is good. My plan is to make the bowl 97%, which I'll talk about in the porting thing. Now, the other major part of this head is the pinch. I'll show you. That's this area, which I'm doing my best, so bear with me. Okay. So, there's two measurements to talk about. The pinch is usually from the push rod slot over 
and up. So if I measured from here to here, which I did, I got 0.992, which is pretty tiny. And by the way, filling between here and the outside, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of material, so I might be removed maybe 30 thousandths. Don't quote me on that. Once I start grinding, I'll know for sure. The good news is, unlike AFR, it's not encapsulated. So if I break through, I can get a welder and weld up my hole. I will not use epoxy. Now, the height goes from here, where it touches here. So across here, where it's tightest, I go to the floor and then measure to the top. And they gave me 2.07, giving me, when I multiply, width times height, I get 2.05 minimum CSA. This is the smallest area. This will be growing a little bit, but not my much. Because after all, it's going on an engine that's not going to see a lot of RPM. But um, when I do the porting video on this, you can see that. So there's some of your insight into it. Um, more than likely, I'm going to CC things too. But I thought I'd just give you this beginning phase of it. And hopefully you'll see me cut to the next video and show me flowing it. Oh, I'm going to flow it on a 403 board too. Because after all, it's going on a 355. So that's a 403 board. So it probably would flow more on a bigger bore, but that's what I'm going to use. Okay, guys, before I show you the flow numbers, I wanted to um, let you hear something. It looks like it's a video so you could see it, but I know it's got a sound here. I was flowing the head and it made this horrendous with, um, noise, like a ring. And what it is, is that ledge I was talking about on the seat, um, the air is hitting it and it's making it a high pitch, like whine. You can hear it hitting it. Um, so I'm going to try to show you, and I'll let you show you what I'm doing so you kind of get an idea of what all is going on. But so this is the same as bench. These are the raw numbers we'll pull up here, or corrected numbers I'll pull up here. Let's go over my computer. So this is the same. All this run, this screen right here is showing you is the exact numbers that the Sanyas has. But this is using Audi software, which I hate. This is my, um, it's the performance trend software. And it's got a separate um, black box, the pressure sensors that it's using to take readings. In other words, there are two, if you look at it, there are two systems that are recording each one. So it kind of sees if I can tell if the bench or something's gone wrong because one of the two systems will show different numbers. That's kind of how it works. I mean, they'll be off a little bit because they each read about the same, like probably within one or two. But if I ever see one where like this is 20, but this one's like, you know, uh, 10 CFM less or something, and then I know something's up. But I'm just showing you this before you could do it. But the biggest thing is I want you to hear this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So, and then you'll see stuff. But let me put my air protection on. So I for sure hear it better with earmuffs on. I know that sounds weird. So here we go. <laughs> Hopefully you heard that ring. I've still got the exhaust to flow. And once I flow that out, I'll, I'll um, do the, show you the numbers. Okay guys, here are the numbers. Um, this right here is the intake flow. And it's got all the way to 800. I couldn't go any higher because the retainer was hitting the guide. And same with the exhaust. So looks like it's flowing peak at 253. And my number at 400 is 223. Um, exhaust flow looks to be 198. Remember I float without an exhaust pipe. The four numbers, 167, those are my important ones. It's, to be honest with you, it's pretty good. It's really good. For a 2-2 valve, um, no port work done. Not bad, not bad. Now, I told you it's a copy of a Dart Pro 1 Platinum head, but some of you may be asking, well, what's the difference in flow? Do you have that? I do. So let me go back here. Let's see, file. All right, this, sorry, a lot of stuff. This is the Dark Pro 1 Platinum 200cc. Um, it's a lot better. So in case you're wondering, well, how much better is the Pro 1 Platinum American version of this head? A lot. So for instance, we just saw it flowing 222 at 400. This thing flows 242 at 400. 
and then at peak it's flowing 261 before it's the other Chinese invitation was flowing 252. Now the exhaust side is also way better at flowing. Oh, I should point out this. I used to this with this metal pointer. See, it's 222. This is with the exhaust pipe attached. I used to flow it at one inch with the exhaust pipe. I don't attach. I don't do that anymore. So in other words, all these are without an exhaust pipe except for just that number. So you can pretty much ignore that number. But these are all the other numbers are exactly like I just flowed the head. So this one's 207. It's a good 10 CFM better. So the American head is a better flowing head. Just something to keep in mind. It costs quite a bit more. You might ask yourself why it flows more. The Dart, the Dart Pro 1 Platinum comes CNC bowl blended and it blends in well. So um, good job on their part. But because of that extra work, of course, it costs more and it's an American made head. There you go.